Hello. Don't know why I did that. <laughs> Yet another video where I feel the need to apologise for my appearance. <laughs> And before we get into today's video, I just wanted to quickly mention that there will be links in my bio um, about how to help and boost what's happening in Palestine right now. Um, I know that, you know, Booktube is like a safe space for a lot of people and people come here to escape, but it is really, really important that we do everything that we can. I think we've been quite disencouraged uh, by mainstream media. I, I know I sound like a conspiracy theorist when I say it, but I, I feel like a lot of the media that we consume that is seen as reliable, like you know the BBC, things like that, um, they do use those buzzwords of like difficult conflict and loaded history. So then people get quite scared of saying the wrong thing and so they say nothing at all and I feel like that's quite dangerous. Um, and if you actually do your own research and you look into the fact that it's an illegal occupation and that one side has a huge army that is funded by multiple governments across the world and one side does not have that, it's just not an equal conflict. Um, the way they keep describing it is a conflict and that's not the case at all. So I, I just feel like it's really important to do your own research and I know that booktube like I said is a safe space for a lot of people but please just don't be complacent like yes you can't be tuned into every single horrible thing that happens in the world but you know there are times when people need you to speak up and I think this is definitely one of those times. With that said let's get on with today's video and I'm actually very excited for today's video because you can probably tell what it is already by the title is that it's a tier ranking video and I've never ever done a tier ranking video. I'm a little bit nervous because obviously I've never done one before and I'm not the best when it comes to technical editing skills so let's see how we splice the video of my screen and where I have to also google how to record my screen I'm not prepared and I thought it'd be really really fun to do a tier ranking YA adaptations video because you know I love a good YA novel uh, you know I love a good adaptation just a good film in general and I thought this video would be really fun because I feel like there are definitely two camps of the book community and the larger camp is the like how dare you change anything this is so unnecessary it doesn't feel like the book at all, you are horrible, you are trash, throw it in the bin. There's like another type of book reader that's sort of not really bothered. And because I did film at university, I'm a film graduate, um, I have a little bit of knowledge about how making a film works, what goes into the process of making a film, how hard it is to make a film that tells the story efficiently in a time efficient way that hits all the story beats that it has to hit in an efficient way. So I feel like I'm a lot more forgiving when book adaptations have to cut things out and also because my memory is fucking awful. A lot of the times when I'm watching a book adaptation I just will not remember the stuff that they've left out so I it doesn't tend to bother me that much and I think because I tend to let things slide I might have a few differing opinions on some adaptations that might be a slight bit controversial but we'll see how it goes. Screen recording, there we go. How do I know if it's doing it? It was doing it and I just stopped it. <laughs> I just brushed my screen because it was dusty as if that would make a difference to the actual recording of the screen. No, it's not going to. <laughs> so let's just talk you through some of the categories I have listed on the left. The top is God tier, could not be improved, which is obviously self-explanatory. I would not change anything about this YA adaptation. The next tier down is it was good, y'all are just mean. <laughs> and that's the side where basically I'm going to be a lot more forgiving on certain films that I know have been slandered by uh, the book community. And next we have the mid tier, which is a Logan Lerman tier, which basically just equates to right cast, wrong crew, um, because I know that the Percy Jackson films are universally hated, and but I think that Logan Lerman was the perfect choice um, for Percy Jackson. A lot of people agree that he was the right choice, that just the rest of the film wasn't great. So that tier is reserved for films that got some aspects completely right, but just didn't quite reach their full potential. The next one is get in the bin, trashy but fun. So ones that were not great, but I don't mind coming back to every so often. Like I will watch it again, even if it's not the best and makes me sort of Ugh. at some points, it's fine, just a little bit of trash. And then the last tier uh, is amnesia, wish I could forget. And I picked amnesia because we all know that it's a, a very fun, uh, overused YA trope. It's 
the end user trope. Just films that were complete garbage that I just wish I hadn't seen and could erase from my memory. And then obviously down here we've got a selection of YA. Um, most of them I've seen obviously otherwise why would I put them in here. Some of them I haven't actually so we'll see how this goes. I just looked at my shelves and you know did some googling and found you know the most sort of notable YA adaptations. So I'm not going to go in any kind of order. I'm literally just going to go in whatever order the generator uploaded the pictures in. So we might be jumping around from series because I've put like individual films from franchises in but just just come along with me, it'll be fun, we're gonna get into some opinions and we'll see if you agree. So the first one over here is 13 Reasons Why and I'm just gonna immediately plop that into Amnesia which I could forget because I'm not gonna lie, I have forgotten a lot of it, I have erased a lot of it from my brain. It just isn't good, I feel like they just got a lot of things wrong um, and I feel like they tried to say a lot of stuff about suicide and self-harm and just went about it in a very clumsy way and they were advised by several sort of mental health charities to not depict things in the way that they depicted things and they just didn't listen to that advice and why is it getting four seasons now? The book is like this big, it, there's not a lot to it. I just feel like they definitely milked it and they just did not listen when a lot of the audience that they were trying to uh, uplift and you know target they didn't listen to the criticism that came from them so it's like just not a good time no and next up we have the Hulu TV adaptation of Looking for Alaska which I mm, I'm gonna put it in mid tier the Logan Lerman tier I was thinking about maybe putting it in Trashy, but it is well made. I do like the cinematography, I like the way it's shot, I do like the cast. The script is god awful though, because I think what people don't understand about adapting John Green's work is that the reason his books are so popular are because of his beautiful command of language, because of his beautiful one-liners that are just endlessly quotable that find themselves on, you know, fan edits and you know tumblr posts and all that and I feel like these adaptations want to obviously include the reasons why the books are so popular so they want to include that beautiful language and it just does not translate well to the screen. I feel like when you're reading a book you're more likely to, to suspend your disbelief because you're reading it in a sort of narrative voice and it feels literary and it feels elevated and it feels like a stream of consciousness and it feels like giving voice to like a deep emotion but when you see it on screen and it's like a character especially a young character a teenager just blurting stuff like that out it just sounds a bit jarring there's definitely ways you can in, in integrate it a little bit better there are definitely ways that you can keep some of those iconic lines but without making them sound really really clunky and forced and I just feel like the Looking for Alaska adaptation didn't didn't quite do it and next we have <laughs> Breaking Dawn part two, and sorry, I'm just gonna go right ahead and put that in the God tier. I just remember the euphoric experience of seeing that in the cinema for the first time. Uh, and you know what scene I'm talking about, the sequence at the end that people think is real when you're watching it and then it turns out to be a dream sequence. Spoiler, but that film's been out for years, I don't feel like that's a spoiler for anybody. Um, and I just remember sitting there with B, and there was a guy at the back of the cinema who, you know, once it was revealed it was a dream, he stood up very angry and shouted, I dropped my coke for nothing, and then stormed out, which, you know, mood. And I feel like any film that has that sort of impact, any film that encourages that expelling of emotion, God tier cinema, that's what it's all about. And next we have Me, Earl and the Dying Girl, which I definitely went hard for when it came out because it's quite aesthetically pleasing. I think in my initial review, which I actually did on this channel, it's one of my first ever film reviews, um, I said it was like if Wes Anderson directed a coming of age film. It is very beautifully shot, the cast is good, but it just hasn't had any staying power for me. Like I have it on DVD and I don't think I've ever reached for it. it I only saw it once in the cinema. So I might as oh, I don't know what to do, because I do have fond memories of watching it, but I just feel like I can't put it in the good tier because I just don't return to it very much. So I'm going to put it in Logan Lerman, you know, there are some good elements of it, I like the way it's shot, I like the cast, it just hasn't had any long lasting power for me. And then we have The Hate You Give, which, don't hate me. Is going in mid-tier 
and I'll explain why. <laughs> Obviously the book is incredibly powerful and there are definitely scenes of the film that really really worked for me and Amanda Stenberg is absolutely incredible in the main role as star. They give a wonderful performance and those sort of very high tension, high emotional scenes are very very impactful and you're very gripped when you're watching it in the cinema. Just from a script point of view I struggle to really like it in that way. Um, like I said there were very there are some very impactful moments but ultimately I thought the voiceover was much too heavy-handed. Um, it really didn't give its audience any sort of respect. It did sort of over explain everything that was already clear. I remember a particular scene um, involving Star's younger brother in which the narration just completely kills the moment um, and I was sort of welling up and listening to the music and then the narration just cuts in and tells you how to feel and it just was very jarring and I think that is a common theme with YA adaptations is that they think because obviously the writing from the book is so popular and so iconic that they have to have voiceover, they have to include those passages from the book in the film in order for it to be successful and deemed like a loyal adaptation and that's just not the case. You can make a good film that has the essence of the book without um, you know, just reading out passages from the book because they just don't translate well to the screen. Divergent, hello. Uh, we're, we're going to the trashy but fun. I feel a bit bad putting it in the second to last tier because I did just sort of make Divergent my whole personality when it came out. Uh, I was very into that. I was very into Divergent and I have watched it multiple times and I would rewatch it now. Um, but I just don't think I can put it any higher. I don't know. Can I put it higher? Can I put it in mid-tier? Do you know what? The first one, the first one I'll put in mid-tier because I think the cast is really good. I'm crushing on all of them. I really, really desperately wanted to be Shailene Woodley when I was a teenager. I lived vicariously through her, through all of her films. So, you know what? Happy memories, happy vibes. I'm putting the first one in mid-tier. Allegiant, on the other hand, you can choke. Um, <laughs> Do you know what? <laughs> wait, wait, no. I'm putting it in trashy but fun because isn't there that stupid scene with the bubbles? Yeah, where they're like in the bubbles and they're like just floating around and they're trying to have this like serious conversation and it just looks fucking stupid. Yes, I'm putting it in trashy but fun. I would watch that again. <laughs> Love Simon. What are we doing with Love Simon? I'm gonna put it in it was good um and this tier is a little bit flawed because like it's the good tier um but i put it was good you're just mean but i don't think there's anyone really hating on the love simon film really although i do understand some people have criticized the final scene in love simon the ferris wheel scene because it does the way they've done it in the film it does sort of force somebody out of the closet in the way that the book doesn't do. It's a movie, we can suspend our disbelief. I really enjoy Love, Simon. I think the soundtrack is stellar and I think the cast was stellar and it just gave me those happy teenage vibes that we know I cherish. Oh, Perks of Being a Wallflower, hello. Right up there in God tier. I will not hear any slander towards the perks of being a wallflower. I know that it was seen as a little bit basic, it was everyone's sort of gateway into like sad, depressed YA fiction, um, but it found me at the exact right time. I really overly romanticised it, probably to a fault, um, but Emma Watson, Ezra Miller, Logan Lerman, absolutely perfect, stunning soundtrack, and I don't care how basic it is, like every indie girl who loves the Smiths, every indie girl who loves David Bowie, yeah, okay, sure, sue me, I was one of those, I was an indie girl who liked the Smiths and liked David Bowie, and I still do, what are you gonna do about it? It works for me, it will always work for me. So it's going in the top tier. What I also really found interesting about Perks of Being a Wallflower is that it's directed by the author and that is a very rare thing to happen. I presume that he had some directing experience before having, you know, written the book and then directed the film, but that's just quite a rare thing. And I think maybe that's why it's such a good adaptation for me, because it's directed by the person who wrote the book. So it just feels like the book felt and it's had that staying power for me and I will definitely return to it.
many many times in the future. Maze Runner, we're just gonna go ahead and put in the trashy but fun, um, because it's not like badly made, it's not like laughably bad the way that Allegiant is in some parts, but um, I just don't ever feel a need to rewatch it. I have it on DVD, like most of these, but I've just not felt the need to return to it. Ugh, Percy Jackson. Hello, we're going up here in the Logan Lerman tier. That's what Logan Lerman tier was built for. Um, Percy Jackson, I enjoy those films, I don't care. Um, I think I watched either the first or second one before I read the books and it was what made me want to read the books. So I know that's the wrong way of going about it. I might get like slammed in the comments for, sorry, just checking my camera is still recording me because sometimes it has to stop at this point. Um, but yeah, I think those films are fine. And it has that scene in which Percy uses his iPod Nano to look round a corner at Medusa. Like, how is that not cinema? I love it. It's just fun. And Logan Lerman is perfect. He perfectly understands the role. And I think those films are just fun. And that's what the books are. They're fun. Like, why are we, like, so overcritical? It's not trying to be anything that it's not. It is just a fun YA film about Greek gods and monsters. And honestly, I don't know if the Percy Jackson films would get as much hate as they do if it wasn't for the fact that Rick Riordan has been so vocal about the fact that he hates them, um, which, uh, I mean, he's entitled to his opinion, fair enough, but I just, I just, I just don't think they're that bad. I really don't. I just don't understand. Next up, we have Fall in Our Stars, which I'm going to put in, it was good, y'all are just mean. I think a lot of John Green books as well as the adaptations have fallen victim to the like, the story of the same thing that happened to Twilight where it was like it was really really popular and then it became very very cool to hate on it because it's like oh you like that, that's so problematic and that word was just chucked around all the time. Um, for no apparent reason. And I, like, it's flawed, sure, everything is bloody flawed, um, but I think John Green content especially was really held up to this weird standard. And some of the criticism is valid, but like, it just didn't, the, the level of sort of slander it got after it was popular was just not pr in proportion to what it actually was. So I'm putting it in, it was good, you are just mean. And Dare Me. Now I don't know if this even counts as YA, but it's about teens, it's about cheerleaders, and I recently read the book and loved it. The book was a five star for me. Really iconic, really interesting, really explored that sort of line between jealousy and close friendship and the sort of lengths you'll go to for your best friend and also because you're angry at your best friend. It just really explored that sort of darker side of female friendship. The series, I'm struggling where to put it because I don't want to put it in amnesia because it wasn't bad. Like I don't wish I hadn't watched it. It wasn't bad. But I just don't know if I should put it in trashy but fun because it's it's not that fun. <laughs> I feel really mean putting it in the bottom one though because it's like it's well made and it's fine but like it's just fine. It's nothing, it's nothing really more than that. No, it's not. I'm, okay, I'm putting it in Trashy But Fun, even though it wasn't that fun. All the Bright Places. I just never thought this film was going to come out, even. I read the book when it came out. I went to the launch event of the book, and I'd never heard of Jennifer Niven before, and she was talking about her book that was inspired by her teenage experience of finding her teenage boyfriend dead after he'd committed suicide. Um, and this is what this book, All the Bright Places, was about. The, the way she talked about it made me really want to read the book, so I bought it, got it signed, and read it in the course of like the next evening and the day after. Like I read it very, very quickly and I just really loved it, the way it was written. Um, it has since been criticised for its portrayal of bipolar and mental illness, and I don't know enough about that, and I haven't read it recently enough to really comment on its portrayal of that, but I just remember at the time I, I found it really um, impactful and, and moving and also I feel I feel like we need to be a little bit mindful of overly criticizing it because it is based on her real experience she's not you know stepping into the shoes of someone that doesn't know anything about this topic it is her real life so I feel like you do have to be respectful and mindful of that when you're critiquing it that said the film wasn't that great and it was sort of stuck in production hell for like three years and we never thought it would come out by the time it came out the time had passed for that era like i feel like there were it was 
optioned around about the time that Fault on Our Stars and Divergent and Hunger Games and Maze Runner was all coming out. It was optioned around about that time and it just kind of missed the window for people that were really into YA. So I'm going to put it in the bottom tier because I'm not going to lie, I'm never going to watch it again. It's going in the bottom tier, I feel a bit bad but... We move, it's fine. In the next one we have Angus on the Perfect Snogging. You are going straight to God tier, my girl. Absolutely perfect. Will not hear a word of slander against that movie. Wonderful. Although I'm unable to comment on uh, how good of an adaptation it is um, because I've not read the books. But the film. I think it's perfect in every single way. Next up we have Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1. Um, what do we do with this? I'm gonna put you in Get In The Bin, Trashy But Fun. It is fun. Um, I do love the honeymoon sequence that will always, you know. RIP my camera dies so I lost this book footage where I put five feet apart in the bottom tier. Anyway, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Alright, next up we have How I Live Now, which honestly I'm going to put into Amnesia simply because it's not even a wish I could forget, it's I have forgotten. Apart from, isn't there a weird incest storyline there? Doesn't she like get with her cousin or something? It's weird, it's like a post-apocalyptic world, I get it, her options are limited, but I don't know if I can quite get behind uh, that, so, no. <laughs> Mockingjay, is that, is that part one? Yeah, that's part, Mockingjay part one. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put it in the good tier. Um, I don't think anyone's particularly mean against Hunger Games. I think they're all sort of universally liked, but it doesn't bang quite in the way that Catching Fire does, so that's why it doesn't make the top tier. Death Cure, I'm putting in the wish I could forget. Not because it's bad, just because I have forgotten. Like, that's the thing, they're just like, you know, head empty, no impact. The only thing I remember about that film is that Dylan O'Brien nearly died doing a stunt for it. So I don't feel like that merits it a place any higher because that's got nothing to do with the film itself, so bottom tier, I'm, I'm afraid. The first Hunger Games I'm putting in the good tier, you know, set up the story very nicely, well cast, well made, I mean who has any complaints against the Hunger Games? Not really. Spectacular now, honey, you're going straight to God tier. Um, this is sort of a lesser known uh, why adaptation, which I'm not really sure why, because it has like the exact same cast as all of the other really popular adaptations of that time, so it has Shelley Woodley and Miles Teller playing the lead couple and they are honestly so fantastic together in that film. It also has Brie Larson in a fairly minor role and she's Captain Marvel so it has a lot of people in it that have gone on to do really great things and just have really interesting careers but this particular now is just a wonderful um, woefully underrated novel and film I think. I mean the book is a little bit darker, it doesn't quite have uh, the same sort of uplifting ending as the film does, but I can appreciate them both. I think the book ending is much truer and sadder, but then the film ending um, isn't like a sort of Hollywood happy ending, but it is a sort of more hopeful one and one that leaves it a little bit open-ended and you can sort of make up your own mind about what happens and what you think should happen. And I appreciate that and the performances are just wonderful. I love the soundtrack. It was one of my favourite films for the longest time. I think it still is. I mean, it always is going to make me emotional. There are lots of beautiful lines in it and I just... I remember I downloaded the mp3 audio of the trailer to The Spectacular Now because the way that they used the music and they overlaid certain lines in that trailer was just really beautiful and really sort of vibey. And so I would literally get on the bus to school and just listen to the mp3 of the trailer to that film. like on a loop. Like a weirdo! <laughs> Gorge Trials, you're going in where, I don't know, like, not to be mean, but these films had, like, no impact. I mean, I remember liking them because Dylan O'Brien, but, like, what else is there? I mean, I, Thomas Sangster is in it, and he's good. Wait. Should I put it higher? I think I enjoyed Scorch Trials actually more than Maze Runner because it's a bit more of an interesting atmosphere, like they get out of the maze into like the world so the, the texture is a bit nicer, like of the world. So maybe just put it in the mid-tier, but then it's not on the same level as the other films in the mid-tier. 
No, you're staying in the trashy tier, I'm sorry. To all the balls I've loved before, you're going in... I'm putting it in the good tier. Um, again, it doesn't really quite fit the y'all are just mean uh, section of this good tier, because I think that's quite a universally liked one. Um, although the rest do decrease in quality. Like, let's just find the rest of them in this list. P.S. I still love you goes trashy but fun. I feel like, yeah. I'm not a fan of the like introducing new love interest just for drama's sake. I feel like John Ambrose was done a bit dirty in that film to be honest so I, I'm just not a fan of that trope so that's why that one goes there for me. And then the last one to all the boys is just gonna go in the mid tier. Then we have Catching Fire! Yes honey, you're going in God tier. We love that. Um, just iconic all round. We have Finnick, we have the um, Quarter Quell, that's what it's called, and the arena is just iconic. Like, who was doing it like the arena in Catching Fire? Like, she is just on it. I mean, so fun. <laughs> then we have The Duff by uh, Amnesia Tear. Didn't like that film at all. I just, it just screamed like middle aged men trying to write a teen movie and like name dropping Snapchat every two lines. Just not for me at all. I've also got this kind of funny story here which I is that I know it's about teenagers but I don't know if yeah it is YA I think it is YA um and I read the book I really enjoyed the book I'm not gonna lie film left like little to no impact on me so I don't think it's a bad film but I'm not gonna put it in trashy but fun because it's not a fun film it's about mental illness so um oh yeah fine amnesia tear sorry I just don't remember anything about it to put it any higher. <laughs> Beautiful creatures! Um, trashy but fun. And I know that's a bit controversial because that's sort of not a good- oh, no. Oh. I remember I tried to watch that film on a plane and the main guy's southern accent just pissed me off so much for some reason that I just couldn't get past the first five minutes. And then I read the book which was fine I guess and then because of that I watched it and it's just quite silly, um, it's like very silly and it's like witches but then there's also like flashes back to like the confederate army, um, like the the conflict, what is that called? The civil war, American civil war, that's what I'm looking for um, and I just, I just don't know what the reason was honestly, I guess it's a southern town so that's sort of the reason but like I don't know, just the vibes just were not quite there, but I feel like some of the production design is nice and some of the costumes are cool, so I'm putting it in trashy but fun. Then we've got Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, which I don't know why I put this image in here because I've not seen it, so I've heard it's bad, but I'm gonna put it in trashy but fun because it's timber and so I imagine I will have a good time with the aesthetic, but I can't comment further because I need to actually watch that one. Next we have Shadow and Bone, which is a recent adaptation, obviously, which we've all been watching. I'm so far gonna put it in It's Good and not the Y'all Are Just Mean. I feel like I, I yeah, I shouldn't have put the Y'all Are Just Mean part there um, because that's just made it confusing, but yeah. Shadow and Bone, good. Looking forward to season two. Fallen! Hi honey, hate you. You wish I could get back every minute of my time I spent on you. Hated the book. Film is terrible apart from one scene which never fails to make me wheeze laugh in which the two love interests are having a confrontation in the school. So I say school, no it's not, it's an asylum because this book is nuts. Um, they're in a swimming pool in the asylum and there's fog there for some reason, atmosphere, but it's an indoor pool in anyway, So they're sitting, standing in the pool having this like stupid conversation about like, uh, stay away from me and like, uh, but, uh, you know how it be in YA. And then he dramatically turns away from her and then butterfly strokes away, butterfly strokes and it shows it to you in slow motion and it's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And you know what, for that I could just put it in God tier, but you know what, the rest is awful. I do not recommend sitting through the entire film just for that scene, because that clip is on YouTube and that's all you need. Let It Snow is also going there. I didn't even find that. I was gonna put it in trashy but fun, but like where was the fun? I just feel like, similar to All the Right Places, it came out, it was probably optioned around about the time that all of those YA books were optioned and then it just somehow got delayed in production and just came out like much after that phase had passed and it just 
rang a bit false. It just didn't feel relevant anymore. Warm bodies, I'm just gonna put in mid tier. Um, has Nicholas Holt in it, so we can't really complain. He's playing a zombie, and there's some sort of romance that I was fairly invested in because I think the kiss scene was quite a nice one. It's Nah. Um, but I couldn't tell you much else about it, so... Wait, is it on the level though of the other things in the image tier? I don't know. No, I'm gonna put it down one because I feel like I haven't seen it recent enough to give it a mid tier. Chaos Walking, I've heard is trash, so I'm gonna put it trashy but fun, but I need to watch it first. But I will have fun watching it because it has Daisy Ridley, Tom Holland, I can vibe with it. I love those books, so it actually might annoy me. Um, but we'll see, we'll see how it be. Next up we've got Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, which I didn't even know was a book, so this is exciting information for me, but that is going straight up into It Was Good, um, because I enjoyed that movie a lot when I was a kid. Hello, I'm stressed, I just have my camera battery now, five minutes left, so we're just gonna have to speed through, but Nat Wolf, good actor, fell victim to what Logan Lerman fell victim to being in bad movies, but Paper Towns had some fun elements, don't hate it, again uses too much voiceover, which I feel like is a universal problem with John Green adaptations, as I've already said. In Surgeon, we're going trashy but fun, um, yeah. That's it. Sisterhood of the Travelling Pants, we're going in, it's good, I don't care. Same with the second one, you can go right up there, uh, I, they're fun. Eclipse, you're going in trashy but, wait, is it? Yeah, let's go trashy but fun because I enjoy watching that one, um, because it has a Riley and that stupid, yeah, Jacob drama, yeah, I enjoy that one. Um, New Moon, I'm not gonna put in tra I enjoy New Moon, but I'm actually gonna put it in Amnesia because it's the one I skip when I do a rewatch. Um, I don't hate it. Wait, well, yeah. I could just put it in Trashy But Fun. But it- yeah, okay. Trashy But Fun. I don't- I don't hate it, but like, I will skip it on a rewatch of the series. Miseducation of Cameron Post, you are going up in the good tier. You are a good- good film. City of Bones, here we go. Here we go. Here's what I wanted to make this video about because this is what the it was good, y'all are just mean tier was built for, was Mortal Instruments, City of Bones. What was wrong with that film? You know, like, what was wrong with that film? We had Lily Collins, we had Jamie Campbell Bower, we had Robert Sheehan, and y'all trashed it to hell, so we never got a sequel, and then instead, we got the Netflix Abomination, which is next in this list, going straight to Amnesia. That was the easiest decision of the whole video. What was that? That was awful. And we could have had that perfect cast. And like, what was so bad with the film? We started and ended in the same place that the book starts and ends. We covered the same plot points. What was so wrong with it? What was so wrong with it, I ask you? The Institute was beautiful, beautiful. Like, Dark Academia vibes, nice portraiture, library, the library, the portal, gorgeous. Then the Netflix one, it was disgusting, it was like that Apple store, it was ugly, I'm sorry, I will just never be over that. The fact that we had such a downgrade that was just unnecessary. We could have had an entire franchise of like, that cast and it would have been glorious, but y'all just hate fun, don't you? <sighs> Uh, next up we have Twilight going straight into God tier. I don't even care. I watch rewatch it like all the time. I love it. I, d I, w I don't care. It's so good. The sunglasses moment where Edward comes out of the Volvo, sunglasses on, arm round Bella, going to hell anyway. Peak cinema. Legendary. We love it. We'll not hear a word of slander against it. And then we're finishing on a sour note with the Vampire Academy movie, which was god awful, you're going in amnesia. I I think I mentioned this in my like one of my recent videos but I was going through my change.org petitions and one of the first ever petitions I signed on change.org was to get a movie sequel to Vampire Academy. I must have gone hard for this and I think it's just because I had a crush on the guy that played Christian, which ironically is the guy that played Jace in the Netflix Shadowhunters thing and then I went from having a crush to like severely disliking him because was bad. But that film, I rewatched it last year. <laughs> it's 
It was awful and I don't know what I saw in it the first time around. And Claire Foy's in it, like the Queen from The Crown has like a weird role in it. And also there's a line, what is it? What does she say? It's really funny. Hot, sassy, molassy. <laughs> There's a bit where she's like trying to seduce the well, she's under the influence of like a weird love potion, um, because somebody wants to like waste her time or whatever. So she goes to the guy that she has a crush on, um, not you know, intending to do anything, but then this love potion takes over and she looks at him and she goes up and down and she goes, hot, sassy, molassy. <laughs> And like, I don't know if it's a joke, but she says it so seductively and I just don't know how they got through that without just laughing. And also the guy that played Dimitri was too old and I never liked that relationship in the book anyway, but just the film made it more problematic because I just, the age gap looked insane and I just don't vibe with that. My camera might have cut off so I'm sorry, but I have yelled and shouted way too much and I have so much footage to get through so I need to wrap this up quick. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me through all of my movie opinions. Were any of them controversial? Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments what your hot takes are, what your favourite Y adaptations are, what your least favourite Y adaptations are. I would love to know um, and I'll see you very soon with another video soon. Bye! Okay, I have 18 seconds because my camera is about to die and it's flashing at me, but I need to tell you that it was just announced, it was just announced that Vampire Academy is getting adapted for TV by the people that did the Vampire Diaries. And you know what? I summoned it. By doing this video, I summoned it. It was me. And you're very welcome. <laughs> I'm very excited for it.